Hey everyone, can you hear me? Okay, awesome. I got a note saying my audio stopped working, but Amanda's telling me it's all good. So I'm gonna get started. So hi, I'm Laura McDonald, co-president at Hotwire. We're a global integrated communications agency. And I'm here to talk to you about Generation Alpha and how the diverse world that they're growing up in will shape their behavior and choices in the future what brands need to start thinking about. So let's get started. Since we published our latest Generation Alpha report in December 2019, the world has changed. From a global pandemic that sent everyone home to increasing attention on racial and gender equality, the world that Generation Alpha live in today is very different. For a start, their world is both much smaller and yet much larger than ever before. For many months, schools were closed or limited in interaction, extracurricular activities stopped, and children were limited to seeing only those within their social bubble in real life. But online, it was a different story. Generation Alpha were not only doing their schoolwork through Zoom, Google Classroom and more, but they were also interacting with their peers online. Roblox, an online game platform targeted to younger audiences, saw a 40% rise in March 2020 alone. And by August 2021, had 48 million daily active users. But while the COVID-19 pandemic looms overall, it's important to recognize many other factors that Generation Alpha has been exposed to over the last 18 months. For example, highly popular preteen influencer Jojo Sowa public announcing that she's part of the LGBTQ plus community through her Instagram channel. To young female sports stars like Naomi Osaka and Simone Biles prioritizing their mental health over winning medals. The role models of Generation Alpha are very different and vocal about standing up for themselves. So whilst we could not have predicted the major shifts in how we see the world today back in 2019, our report did perhaps foreshadow the behavior of Generation Alpha, how they'd adapt and react to these monumental changes. The latest US census reveals that Generation Alpha is the most diverse generation yet. Nearly half of under 18s living in the US do not identify as white. And so our report explored why how such diversity, not only of race, but also of experience, impacted Generation Alpha. And it's good to know that brands are already recognizing this. They're creating more diversity in content and in product than ever before. Look at Mattel's recent line of Barbies that honors six real life female scientists who are integral to surviving the pandemic, or Disney launching a range of adaptive Halloween costumes. And where previously sports stars who didn't win medals were penalized by their sponsors, now sponsors are in full support. But brands have to be careful. Authenticity is an overused word, but one that has never been more important in today's world, particularly with Generation Alpha. So what do we as marketers need to understand about Generation Alpha? And how should we rethink our approaches to reach this influential generation effectively? What's most notable from our study for Generation Alpha is that this diversity, whether ethnicity, religion, gender experiences, do not appear to be having a large impact on their opinions. It's not that their opinions are not diverse. In fact, Generation Alpha gave us the largest variety of answers to questions as broad as favorite ice cream flavors or what they want to be when they grow up. But these opinions do not cluster around traditional demographics. And that's an evolved view from millennials and baby boomers where our study really did show demographic differences. And a great example is gender. Millennials and baby boomers are far more likely than Generation Alpha to group into different viewpoints across gender particularly. Baby boomer and millennial women are significantly more likely than their male counterparts to bring most issues as important. And gender issues are particularly differentiated. Only two thirds of millennial and baby boomer men said that it's very important for boys and girls to be treated fairly compared to well over 80% of their female counterparts. But among Generation Alpha, the difference between genders is much smaller, 79% for Generation Alpha boys to 86% for girls. And this change could also have an impact in the future for how traditional parental roles are viewed. In Generation Alpha, we can now see a desire among young boys to be a dad and a job that was not recognized by millennials and baby boomers. And the increased role that fathers now play in children's lives clearly having an impact on how this is now seen as a proper job and could have major consequences in the inequalities currently seen and how women take on the burden of childcare. It's worth noting though that this hasn't come at the expense of mom. In fact, more Generation Alpha kids wanted to be a mom when they grew up than their millennial mothers, but there's now a much greater balance between mom and dad in the eyes of Generation Alpha. So how many of us have developed campaigns that are for moms only or for dads only? 
generation alpha growing up in a diverse world, one where despite obviously a very long way to go, they are exposed to people across different demographics, from women, blacks, Hispanics, Muslims, and more being really successful. Marketing and communications campaigns must recognize this diverse world to meet Generation Alpha's expectations. And their experience of growing up this diverse, pressurized world are having an impact on their views of the world and how they're behaving and how they're engaged with brands. And we'll need to understand those cultural cues across our entire audiences to start the relationship off with these potential Generation Alpha customers through the right channels and with the right messaging. And for messaging, brands need to understand that despite their age, Generation Alpha already holds strong opinions on some of the biggest issues facing the world today. Our study showed that Generation Alpha care a lot, much more than their millennial parents and baby boomer grandparents did as kids. 90% of Generation Alpha caring about keeping children safe at school compared to less than half of millennials and less than a third of baby boomers to having enough food to eat, treating people fairly no matter what they look like, being accepted for who you are. Our study really showed that Generation Alpha has a much heightened sensitivity to important issues and already has a strong opinion. An opinion that many of their parents and grandparents hadn't even considered at their age. But as millennial and baby boomers age, their opinions on these issues did become stronger and more comparable to those of Generation Alpha today. So when asked what issues were important to them now compared to when they were children, there was a significant shift in their responses. And by evaluating millennial and baby boomer attitudes towards issues from when they were younger to now, we can see that throughout our lives, we form stronger opinions that are shaped by the world around us. But it's important to recognize that despite their youth, Generation Alpha's opinions are already as strongly formed as those of millennials and baby boomers in later life. And so it's possible that as Generation Alpha comes of age, their opinions will be even more strongly formed than the generations that come before them. And we all know what the impact of an opinion generation can do. So how to prepare. First off, really understand who you're dealing with. Generation Alpha cannot be as easily cut into demographics and personas as previous gener generations. Not every Generation Alpha child has the same opinion. In fact, it's the opposite. Generation Alpha is growing up with their own individual diverse thoughts, less impacted by one universal center of truth, such as church or community or family, one that's open and exposed to many influences. And so as a marketer or as a comms pro, you're no longer able to rely on those kind of broad, broad demographics to identify your target customers. Instead, you'll need to get much more granular. You need to really dig into potential customers based on those whose values are closely aligned to your own brand values. And doing so will have a powerful impact on the design of your campaigns and turn Generation Alpha into advocates. But while social good and everyone being equal shouldn't be controversial, sadly, that isn't the world that we live in today. Generation Alpha is very different from the generations that have come before them. And brands that start to adapt to how Generation Alpha view the world may run the risk of alienating audiences who don't see the world in the same way. So we can no longer be able to just know or care about the opinions of our customers, but also the potential opinions of non-customers who in today's hyper-connected world may still have an opinion. And preparing for that pushback, understanding what we're going to do if that happens, will be crucial though to continue to win the hearts and minds of those customers we care about, particularly Generation Alpha, who are so conscious about treating everyone equally. So that's enough for like the presentation phase. You can read more um, about the report on our website if you go to hwgenalpha.com, but I'll um, stop uh, sharing the presentation now, or um, Manda will stop sharing the presentation now, and we can move through to Q&A. And on that, I see one about, um, is it in my opinion, an act of kindness to our planets to not have children? I mean, I think that's a very weighty question, um, obviously, and um, probably not one that as a communications kind of professional is um, that I'm prepared to kind of get into. I think we're much talking about, you know, the opinions of these Generation Alpha, you know, kids and those kind of things and how they're, um, growing up in the world around them and, and really thinking about it from that kind of communications lens in terms of, you know, as they grow up and start making choices of their own. So any other questions? Um, Monica, there are brands that think you're doing this well. 
Absolutely. I think there are a number of different brands, ones that are targeting kind of generation alpha itself. I mentioned obviously Barbie with their latest range, um, not just of the scientists, but in general, how they're bringing a lot more diversity in. Um, and then um, I think Target is another one um, that has been doing an awful lot of work to present themselves as much more diverse and inclusive in all of their kind of, you know, communications, the kind of down to like the images, the models that they have, you know, for their for their clothing and, and those kind of things. I think another brand that does it really well, which um, will have impact on, will reach Generation Alpha, but obviously it's much broader as someone like Nike and their kind of campaign. If you, you know, if you have a body, you are an athlete and being really inclusive. I think that's um, another brand that's doing it really well. Um, Generation Alpha and buying into cancel culture. I don't know if they will understand that. That's not a question that we asked in the study. Um, we're certainly aware that they have incredibly strong opinions and, and stronger opinions than their kind of parents or grandparents. And so I think brands that that went against those opinions would definitely be brands that, you know, Generation Alpha would have real issues with and, and really kind of push back on. But like the whole sort of cancel culture, I, I don't know if they're at, sort of at the age, their kids that are coming up on the age of 11 now, really kind of one think about the kind of cancel culture kind of conversation or two you know are definitely the you know not always the ones who are kind of spending the money to to decide if where they're going to spend their money or not um comparisons with gen z really good points i mean it's absolutely something that we'd like to see i mean if we in our study we looked at generation alpha their parents who are typically millennials and their grandparents who are typically baby boomers that said, when you look at the kind of other studies that other people have done around Gen Z and compare it to some of the insights that we have from Generation Alpha, there are definitely similarities. And, and that's probably not surprising because Generation Alpha are looking up, you know, to, you know, these kids are in elementary school, they're looking up to, to high schoolers and college students who sit in that Gen Z category. And, and they're often a lot of their influencers or their influencers are um, Gen Z. So I think there will be some, um, lots and lots of similarities but i also think that you know generation alpha have you know come up in a world where it's less combative like a lot more of the things are already happening you know and making these changes already um so i think that will be one that will be really interesting to kind of explore um that as you know brands like target are making the changes because of the gen z being kind of combative and really pushing for it and that kind of stuff whether um generation alpha will quite have that same kind of attitude um that gen z do or whether they just grow up thinking that it's normal and there's less to fight for because brands are already making those shifts and change um so i think that i think um violet as you're saying there could be like a mitigating factor to, to some of that pushback because Gen Z have been the ones who've really had to go and fight the good fight um, and Generation Alpha just grow up thinking it's um, much more normal than say if I look about it from, from mine like I grew up with my mother working and so therefore I was assumed that it was normal for you know moms to to go and, and work whereas you know I know for like my mom her going and, and not being a stay-at-home mom and having a job was definitely very different so I think about those kind of what they're influenced by, what they see, what their expectations, you know, because of the generations that have come before and made those changes. I think Generation Alpha will potentially be less combative, but have higher expectations. Are they expected to use different types of platforms? So in our very first um, Generation Alpha study, we actually did it in um, conjunction with Wired. Um, and so they really looked at those kind of like future of the platforms that they're using and um, those kind of things. And I definitely think the whole um, human machine interaction and how they kind of interact so much more with technology. We talked a lot in that first report, which you can go and find on our website about voice, um, particularly. And, you know, I've certainly experienced it with, you know, my kids that they don't go in a very rarely like type into, um, into Google, what they want to find. Even when my son was working, um, doing his schoolwork from home, if he had to like Google something, he would speak to his laptop versus, um, you know, typing like I would naturally do. And so less around probably like the types of platforms that there will be new platforms though, you know, TikTok and, you know, Peloton and all of those kind of things that have really kind of risen to the forefront over the last few years. I expect those kind of platforms will definitely continue to evolve and there'll be new ones that come up. But I think what's probably most interesting is how 
children will choose to interact with the platforms, how they engage with those platforms. And I think from a communications point of view, so much of what we do has traditionally relied on the written word or the like spoken kind of word that's being broadcasted at us and how much now needs to go interactive. Um, you know, in that kind of, you know, talking to technology, talking to computers, how they engage, you know, and you can see that already happening in other generations with the rise of like Discord and those kind of ones. Education gaps. Oh, I think that's probably a question for someone who works in education. Um, it's from personal experience and last year was incredibly hard having children doing a lot of remote learning and there is definitely, you know, increasing disparity between um, kids who had parents who could set up with the right technology, whose parents had time to, to sit with them and to do, you know, essentially homeschooling through to kids whose parents worked, continue to work out of the house. They don't have great internet connections and, and that kind of stuff. So I do think there are some, you know, huge kind of issues and concerns from it when it comes to education because of COVID. Um, what impact that's going to have, um, as I said, a, an education expert is probably better to talk to than um, myself working in communications. Um, but yes, and I think that will go on to have an impact um, in the future. And I know it's absolutely something that schools, you know, particularly where I live, um, are very conscious of and, and part of the reason why there was such a strong push to get, you know, districts and, and areas where schools had remained remote or had gone to hybrid to go back full time as well. Um, thanks, Lena. From PR professionals, what should we do to ensure we're connecting with Generation Alpha? I think it goes back to the kind of, um, if we want to reach Generation Alpha, it's not thinking about them as one generation. It's very much thinking about, well, who do we want to reach? What do they care about? And not breaking it down in the demographics, that kind of gender divide or race divide or location divide and, and all of those things where before we'd get really specific. It's like, what are the values that they care about what are the things that they care about you know what flavor of ice cream do they love and like really understanding and getting a much greater sense of how do what do they care about that's relevant to my brand and how does that align and so i think you know spending more time in that what we call discover a hot wire or just research and insights and really understanding what they care about what do they value that will allow us to put together a much more effective strategies to connect with Generation Alpha versus just saying, I want to go connect with Generation Alpha. And it's like Generation Alpha girls age four to nine. There's a lot of variety in their diversity and their experiences um, within that group. And so getting really kind of crisp and clear and understanding of what are the values that they hold? How does that connect to my brand, to my products and, and to so on to make sure you're upholding the same values? I think that's the really crucial part of not just doing the broad strokes to connect with the generation, but to really understand who within that you want to connect with and the values that they care about. Any other questions? It's a bit thick and fast. I see one from Alexis about misconceptions from Gen Z and Gen Alpha. I think. I think we sort of touched on that a little bit, the kind of that Gen Z have really kind of gone on kind of and, and, and done a lot. I think it's just going to be those kind of generation alpha expectations that they have much higher expectations than the, this is how the world is, you know, that they this world is, you know, diverse and diversity of experience and, and all of those kind of things. And whereas I know from what I've seen and what I've read in other studies, generation, you know, Gen Z are like pushing against it. Um, and the, you know, the cancel culture and the kind of, you know, okay, boomer and all of that kind of stuff. Whereas generation alpha, just, this is how it is. And so I think that's one of the kind of the differences between them. And so it doesn't mean that you don't have to consider all the things you have to consider about Gen Z, but, you know, in some respects, generation alpha are going to have those even more ingrained expectations. Best professional advice. Um, I think it goes back to don't ever be cookie cutter. Don't ever do something that like same as everyone else just because it's the easy path. I think that's really important when you think about your own career. Um, you don't have to follow in the footsteps of everyone's gone before. You can create your own kind of career path. You can decide that you want to go and work in a different country. You can decide that you want to go and work in a different industry. And that's on you and you can go and create that kind of um, career path. And I think about 
um, that from a Gen Alpha, Gen Z perspective, that they're kind of growing up with that kind of attitude. And so it's about research and insights of understanding what is the possible, what are the possibilities that are there? What are the values? How does that um, align? And so spending a lot of time in, in kind of discover and really kind of thinking, you know, carefully that you're not just going to, from a professional point of view, going like, oh, I'll just do the same as that. That you're creating these kind of bespoke kind of strategies and bespoke um, ideas that are really rooted in um, research and insights. And something that is therefore not just different for being different, but different because it's, you know, the right thing to go to do to, to achieve those goals that you want. Thanks. Yes. Um, children, millennials, Jane Alpha, hugely influenced by their parents' perspective. And our second report, which was from 2018, really dug into a lot of those differences between Generation Alpha and their parents. And I'm, I'm technically a Gen Xer, but like I'm a parent and I have Generation Alpha children. And that was part of the genesis of why we started these reports in the first place. And I think they they absolutely are, because as we saw in this data, you know, millennial attitudes have shifted you know, dramatically, and they are, you know, pretty opinionated, particularly um, mothers and, you know, how women should be treated. And you can see a lot of those things that, that, that you know, we have been um, really kind of pushing and focusing on. And I think that goes back to why Generation Alpha have these really strong opinions, because that's what they see as norm. Um, Rachel, we didn't look into the study was done just before the pandemic. So we didn't look at the kind of remote versus in person. Um, definitely something that we'd love to explore more. I think that world of, um, in our very first report with Wired, we talked about that kind of the like blurring of the lines between online and in real, you know, online and IRL kind of lives and how Generation Alpha don't necessarily see it as I'm going to be online now and I'm going to be in real life now and, and those kind of things. So I think if we think about that from a work point of view, that becomes something that's going to be really fascinating where that kind of the differences between the two are much more blurred. And so they're not necessarily see it as remote versus in-person, but actually just all work. And you can do it, you know, wherever and whenever you want to do it. I think my personal view, Violet, is that it will allow us to streamline in that we'll get much more specific on the values and the messages that we want to create. But what I think, and, and we sort of touched on it as well, the flip of it of like, well, what are the other things? And what are the things that we don't want to talk about that someone else will? So I think we'll have a smaller amount of very targeted messages to reach not just the generation alpha, but like the specific customers, the specific audience we're trying to reach. But I think much more consideration will have to go into where well, if we're going to talk about that and that's going to be what we're talking about, what are the potential other things that other people will talk about that are related to that and, and their issues that they may have with what we're saying? that we'll then have to much more carefully think through um, and have kind of, how do we go back to our key messages? How do we ignore the, the haters? And you can, I think Nike is a great example of that. If you think about some of the controversy around when they put um, Kaepernick up as their sort of spokesperson and how you had, you know, certain people burning Nikes and, and those kind of, you know, things. I think, you know, Nike had a plan and a, an approach of how they were gonna handle that. And it's not necessarily a key message, but they were prepared for it versus you've certainly seen other brands like Mr. Bedahida Head, if we're talking about Generation Alpha, perhaps not preparing as much as they could have been. And then, you know, the backlash happens and then it gets confusing, gets more messaging. So like not a higher amount of messages to reach that target audience, but a heightened awareness and a heightened planning around how do we um, prepare for that pushback or potential pushback, pushback and as you know, someone who works in comms, you know, we all know that it, it it's so much better if you have a plan in place than, rather than scrambling at the last minute to deal with, you know, issues that arise. Any other questions? I think Amanda said I've got one more minute. Well, impact hiring strategies. I mean, Generation Alpha is, 11 now so we hopefully have a few years at least in um in the comms industry before we'll be um hiring them but i definitely think if we think about some of the stuff from you know that we're seeing now with gen z i think brands uh, companies you know ourselves communications agencies getting really clear on our values and how we communicate them and back them up 
we can't it's not just enough anymore to just say that we care if we've got to back that up with you know with data with investment and all of that and so I think that's only going to heighten as um, you know Gen Z really enter the workforce and then obviously Generation Alpha coming as well so I think just for the brands themselves getting really clear on their own values and backing those up and being really authentic um, that absolutely has to come into hiring perfect well thank you everyone and uh, head to hwgenalpha.com if you want more information.